Hi, hi, all of you. This is Gil. So you gotta check out this thrift store find I made. I found this at the Salvation Army the other day. It's this stereo. It's a stereo. You know, it. it this is kind of like something that I used to have in my past, but there's an entirely different brand. And well, you know what? What's unique about the stereo, this find, any this thrift store find, is that um, is that this is all all like complete. I found I found it like this, at the thrift store, like all complete, and it's all the same brand. And I think everything were, were like together. I guess like the last owner, like when they like us. This was all together when the last the last owner bought it. Well, I would say, I mean, everything is original, I would think. I mean, and then and it even came with the manual, you know. I, I even got a manual for it too. And then even like in the manual, it actually even mentions these um these model number um tape deck and the tuner and everything. It mentions these, you know, yeah. These are the model numbers. I don't know, but the tape deck. There's the model number of the tape deck. And then the model number of the receiver or the tuner. And then even the CD player, too. The model number. And then there's um, the um, amplifier. I mean, the model number is right here. 280 CA283, which is over here. And even the rack is actually by the same company. I mean, so this was all bought as one, as I could see it. it it's easy to see that. That I mean, it, it's very rare for me to come around a, a thrift store find where where they would actually put to leave everything all all in one. You know, like because they would usually separate everything and then sell sell the pieces separate. You know, because even the speaker. Like, it's from, well, yeah, I remember back in my day that uh, my, my um, uncle, Peter, that's his name anyway, he had one of these stereo systems, you know, like, and then we, these removable covers, these are the big 15-inch speakers, very big, you know, like, and they make good sound, too, I mean, like, it sounds really good, too, I mean, yeah. Here's a model, or the specifications of the speaker. And then, and then, even the rack is a Fisher. So this would tell me, this tells me that everything was together in one, like they bought it in a store, like all together in one. And you know what, if I can remember, Something like this would have cost a thousand dollars, man, easy, back in 1985. Because according to the manual, this one is from 1985. Right there, it says it here somewhere. Yeah, 1985. <clears throat> yeah, this one's from the 80s, the early 80s, basically the first half of the 80s decade and then another thing that's unique here is this turntable right here it's very unique you know what's unique about it because it's a linear tracking system so i mean although i, I don't i did not care for that but i mean i got it i mean so and i i never i never had i never had a linear tracking um uh turntable and but but What's unique about these is that, that you don't even have to lift the tone arm with your hands or anything. You just use these controls, but it can be kind of finicky. I mean, because sometimes we're kind of like in a hurry, but we can't do that with this turntable. You know, we cannot do that with our hands. You know, we can only use these as I saw it because I tried it already. And then this one has a speed selector. And then this one has um, the size of the record. And then, and then start, stop, repeat, speed, and yeah. But anyway, I mean, and then it has this original CD player as well. I mean, it looks like it's just a very, very basic CD player. I mean, I'm going to turn on the stereo right now. So, I'm going to turn it on. Well, 
it's hard to see it in here, so I mean. And then it has a five band equalizer. So yeah, I mean. And then all the right here it has a, well this is the function, the tuner, and then the phono. This is the, and then it even supposedly has a remote, although I didn't get one here, I mean. But it, the remote control is extremely basic, you know. You, you could almost not do anything with the remote in any way, I mean. This is what the remote control looks, very basic, you know. So I'll just scour through the manual just for fun. Yeah. I, I had a lot of fun reading this manual. Had a lot of fun with it, you know. And then that's the owner's manual. <clears throat> and the tape player, apparently the tape player, it does work. But, I mean, I could not get this side to work. Well, it does play the tape. I mean, I'm going to play one right now. You could hear it. Yeah, no, that would eat my shorts by Rick D's. <laughs> so it does play, but this side, it just makes a sound. See? See, it doesn't, it doesn't do any, I don't know why, why it's like that. I don't know why it's not working, you know? But I cannot hear anything out of this tape deck, but it does play and everything. Well, it plays the tape, but I don't hear anything out of it. CD player. I mean, it makes that sound and it doesn't work. I mean, apparently the CD player doesn't work, but this is like the display, I mean, the track, <laughs> very basic. It's like a VCR, you know, yeah. Yeah, very basic. Yeah, it was a very basic CD player, but anyway, and then so, and then the tuner right here. Yeah. Pretty basic as well. It has AM and FM. You know, these things are pretty sophisticated. This is very sophisticated for 1985 because, yeah, I know, like, well, I know we had uh, receivers that were digital like that. We had them even in probably in the early 80s, but I mean, this is like really cool. But, and then the speakers. So you already saw it. Well, apparently the dust cap fell off on one of these. And this one, apparently, see the dust cap. And then, you know, look at the size of the voice coil. It looks like, what does it look like to you? It looks like about, looks like about an inch. <laughs> like an inch and a half, maybe. I mean, it looks pretty cheap, if you ask me. I mean, but hey, it sounds good, though. I mean, and so there's like more of the specifications. And then supposedly it was advertised to have a four inch mid range and a three inch tweeter. But I don't, I don't even know if these things work or not. I mean, I, like, because it sounds muffled, you know? But yeah, I'm gonna take the speaker apart because something fell off, fell inside of it. Because I was trying to fix this because it was kind of like stuck open and I wanted to fix it. And then a screw fell inside while I was trying to. <clears throat> and then I'll show you what, the, what it looks like on the other side. I gotta clean that shit. So, and then look at how look how skinny these wires are. Look how thin the wire is. It's insanely thin. You know, it's funny on how they used to use wires that thin. But you know, I used to actually use a wire that thin to power those big speakers that I had back in my days. <clears throat> and then the record player. I'm gonna play a record. I'm gonna demo the record player. I'm gonna demo it. Hang on. How do you... Okay, I'm not sure why it's not working. Hang on. Yeah, I guess I know why it didn't work because when we start, we have to push the size. Let's say 30 inch. And then, and then, and then it's, it automatically does that. And then. But you know, it's, and then if you want to skip a track, 
If you want to skip a track, we can't do that with our hand. Apparently, the only way you could do that is you push these buttons. It's supposed to do this, and then, you know. And then let's say that I want to play this song. And then, and then I push. And by, it, it was acting kind of up. It was acting up a bit. Because it kept going up and down. But it, it works. I mean, apparently it does work because the needle was in there. So, yeah. Uh, seems like the record player is kind of slow. But, I mean, it works. I mean, it does work. Apparently that's how this linear tracking system works. And then, you know, this stand is missing a, um, it's missing a wheel, so it kind of tilts, so I have to fix that. Or I just have to put something in there so it doesn't do that. So I'm gonna, right now I'm gonna go take the speaker off, take it apart, just the big one right now, and I'll show you what it looks like inside of it. <clears throat> okay, after removing about maybe 16 screws total, I removed a total of 16, 16 screws, eight on this little decorator part, and then eight on the speaker itself. Now let's see what it looks like from the back of it. Okay, dang. Look how cheap this shit is, man. God dang, man. Look at tiny ass magnet, man. Shit, that's a tiny magnet there, man. You know, I do know that a stereo system like this one would have cost a thousand dollars to buy back then. But I mean, but maybe well, th there's no way this could be new Diamond or whatever that however we um, pronounce that word. It's like a speaker. It's a kind of magnet that's really small, but it's really powerful. Damn, I can't believe how tiny that magnet is, in. <laughs> And then, and then, well, this is the wiring, I guess. This is like all the, yeah, this connects to all the other speakers, you know. I want to try to, well, I'm not going to bother taking the screws off. I'll, I'll just use a phone instead. I'll just duck my head in there to see what it looks like inside of this. Uh, it's hard to see. I'm gonna have to duck my head in there. Well, well, I cannot see, but I can use my phone, so. <laughs> so that's the, it's all particle board. Yeah. But back then, Oh, that's the speaker. Okay, well, I guess I'm getting ready to put the thing back inside. Put reassemble the speaker. Yeah, look how look how skinny these wires are, man. Shit, man. How can we expect it to deliver enough power on the? But you know, surprisingly, they, they it sounds good. I tried it out, and it it sounds good, man. It sounds really strong. I mean, and it does. I could feel the bass, you know, so so to speak, you know. I could feel it. I mean, it it sounds good for the for what it is for being an '80s system. Okay, after I put on the speaker already, eight screws, and now I'm gonna put this. Um, how we call it, decorator item on it. You know, I tell you, man, these things, you know, used to look pretty macho back then, and, and they were pretty macho, I mean. But it's funny on how I take it apart, and, and then it looks <laughs> dinky, you know, the magnet is so dinky on these things, you know. But, but you know, just because they're dinky, it doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean that it's, gonna sound bad it actually sounds good i mean back in the day i you know i played one some of my old cassettes that i had for 40 years and it sounded good i mean it actually sounded good but it kind of lacked treble i mean treble man i don't know if it's because these things don't work or I, I don't know i think they do work but if i remember that i mean the way these things 
used to sound, it doesn't compare to the way today's, today's system sound, you know? Like the very sophisticated that it is today, the systems today, and everything, you know, like they're very sophisticated by, by back then, you know, like back then, you know, like they, they used to call these high fidelity or high fi or, well, high fidelity. And then, you know, I do know that something like this would have been extremely expensive to buy. That's one, but not only that, when it came to cassettes, you were able to, like, like you were able to do normal bias, they call that. They call it normal bias, which I'll show you an example. This is one of my cassettes that I've had from the 80s, you know, like, this is my original cassette. I'm the original owner of this from 1985, 84, actually, 1984. I had this cassette since 1984. And then it, it was, I used to go, like to go to this cassette to play a specific song, and I'll play it right now. And I'll show you the, what song I'm talking about. It's called, it's by Pat Boone, and it's called Second Coming. Well, hang on. Yeah, I used to like, I used to love to play this song on a high power stereo, you know. Yeah, watch, you're gonna hear it. So another walk around the speaker, like if you remember the wood grain stuff, <laughs> remember the wood grain? Well, then this is what, what gets cute, you know, on, on the vintage stuff. Everything was, it was a trend with the wood grain, you know? Wood grain was a trend on, on all of these vintage items, you know, like wood grain, yeah. I mean, that, I mean that's what, what I think is cute about these vintage things. The wood grain, look at all this wood grain, you know? So I'm gonna weigh in the speaker. And I weigh, how much do I weigh right now? Mm -hmm. I weigh 100 and, 163. I'm gonna now try it with the speaker in my hand. Well, it weighed about, I weigh, it weighed 205. So, I mean, yeah, if I weighed, I'm going to try it again. Yeah, I don't want to break anything now. I weighed, I'm going to try it. See that? 205 with the speaker holding the speaker and then w without the speaker 163 I weigh so it weighs in at about how much is that 42 pounds I guess 42 pounds for the speaker yeah and then well I'm gonna go ahead and well I wanna I don't know when I'm gonna build it gl glue this dust cap back on but, I mean, it's the, this is the way it's supposed to look. I mean, it looked pretty macho, man, back in the day. We remember that? Yeah. And at the bottom of these speakers, it looks like it's plastic. It's made of plastic there. <laughs> so, yeah, see, it's, it's, a, it's like a plastic base. Yeah. It's all plastic. But it looks nice, I mean, yeah, the base is plastic, and it looks like it comes apart, I guess. It looks like it comes apart with a screw, it looks like it. So, yeah, the base, plastic. Now, now to hook up the speakers. And there we go. And then there's wire. <laughs> Look how flimsy this wire is. I guess that's how they were back then. I mean. Okay, well, I'm going to put the screen back on. Well, that thing that was nice about, like, some of these stereo systems that we were able to remove the cover and see the speaker. 
uh, and even replace the speaker if we had to. I mean, but I but on my shelf or systems, they were they they were not take apart a ball, which I hated. I hated that. You know, in my days of, from my little shelfer that I had, like those little speakers that it came with, you know, like back in those days, and they were wood grain too. I mean, <laughs> remember the wood grain and stuff. So this, yeah, the stereo is really, I could tell you, man, it's one cool ass vintage item, man. I tell you, man. So I pay, I paid a hundred dollars for this. I mean, only paid a hundred dollars for everything for the whole setup. Yeah, I mean at the. Salvation Army. So yeah, I'm gonna close the garage so I could demo it in the like in the dark with the lighting. So this is like the way it looks in the dark. See the lighting. I mean, it's not it's not like anything fancy, but I'm gonna play a song. So you know this tape right here. I mean this tape from 1984. I had since 1984. This, this specific song I used to love to play on a high power system because I love the sound. And you're gonna hear it right now. I'm gonna demo it for a few seconds, you know, to avoid copyright, you know. Here. Okay, pause. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the song. Well, this song is called Second Coming by Pat Boone. I'm gonna demo that beginning part again. I love playing that. I love playing that song on a high power system, you know. Well, I hope I'm not gonna get copyrighted on this one, but usually they, they don't, I mean, it doesn't, it seems like YouTube doesn't really hear it. As long as it's not more than like maybe seven seconds long, or like four or five seconds long, that was a damn. Yeah, it sounded so good too right now. I mean, despite of the speakers the way the the way they were right now. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it actually sounds good. I mean, it sounds good. And you know, what another unique thing about this, it's the it's the um, um the, this is tinted. You know, it's like tinted windows. You know, yeah. That's another unique thing about this, you know, that uh, it's got tinted glass, you know. That's cute, you know. I'm telling you. So, yeah, the record player, <laughs> yeah. We all remember these things, you know. Yeah, so. Well, anyway, I hope you liked this video. My in-depth review of this find. But, uh, yeah, like I say, I do know that something like this would have been a thousand dollars easy in in the middle 80s because i know that my um my um uncle had one just like this one but his was a lot more fancier than this one though it was more fancier because he had like additional components you know like a really cool ass equalizer and all that stuff you know and and i know the speakers were the same if i can remember they were the same ones as these yeah i mean I just know that we had a little party, like like they had a little a gathering back back in 1984, yeah, 1984 particularly, and they were using their home stereo system, playing their cassettes, you know, they were having like a massive session of playing cassettes and showing off their music, and I remember Prince was one of those tapes that was popular for the day, you know, like the Prince, um, 1999, you know, like the album. Well, the one that has, like, well, especially the song, um, <sighs> the When Doves Cry, and, and then, and then, um, Let's Go Crazy, those were the top songs for the day, you know, yeah, for that day, and, uh, and there was, of course, there was other, I, I, I can remember those days, you know, so, I mean, back in my day, this stereo, I mean, Every neighbor, every neighbor would have, every friend would have coveted one of these things, you know, like I tell you, man. It was like the most coveted items, like in our, in our days, in our teenager days. As a teenager, this was, these were one of the most coveted items in the world, but only a tiny handful of people had them. Because, you know, like, dads, I, mean, I know dads and moms didn't want to pay a thousand dollars to get something really nice. Of course, they had something cheaper but i mean this, this was a top this was really cool back in the day
this was like this was the thing to get if you wanted to be the coolest, you know, like back in the day, I tell you. But, but I don't know what my uncle paid for his stereo, which was more fancier than this. But I think the last thing I feel like I heard, it was probably like $1,000. But maybe this was 800 I don't know. But I know I know that they weren't that cheap. You know I mean? So, yeah, I mean. So, all right. Well, I hope you liked this video. And... And I'll, I'll see you on the next one. And I'll just show you like the back of it. The back. So I forgot to show you the back of the system. Yeah. This is the back of it. And all the wirings and stuff. So yeah. Okay. I hope you like this video. Alright. See you on the next one.